This is breaking news. Transit Bureau, Michael Kemper, the NYPD's Chief of Patrol, John Chell, NYPD Deputy Commissioner Kaz Daughtry, Health and Hospital Commissioner, our doctor, Dr. Ashwin Vassan, our Department of Social Services Commissioner, Molly Park, and also we're joined by Brian Stetton, our Senior Advisor for Severe Mental Illness. And also the Mayor would like to extend his thanks and our administration thanks to Governor Kathy Hochul for her leadership and partnership in these efforts. So with that now, I'd like to turn it over to Mayor of New York City, Mayor Eric Adams. Thanks so much, uh, Dan Banks, and I'm glad you introduced all the people who are here because it's a hallmark of this administration that we believe in collaboration and we believe that we must come together uh, to solve these extremely uh, complex problems. Far too long, we have relied on one agency or one part of government to deal with issues that cross over various areas of government. And we could not have asked for and received a greater partner uh, than uh, my brother Lieber for what you have been doing and how you have been holding it down over and over. We stood side by side so many times. We have been on the trains together. We have analyzed how do we deal with the public safety uh, issues that we are facing in this in the city, particularly in our transit system. And we are clear, and I'm going to continue to state, as DM Banks indicated, public safety is the actual safety, and it is how people are feeling. We know we have all but 4 million riders a day in a reliable system, and we know that we have approximately six felonies a day out of those 4 million riders. Uh, but if they don't feel safe, then we're not accomplishing our task. Stats don't matter if people don't believe they are in a safe environment, and that is what we are going to accomplish. I said it the other day, and I'm going to say it again. Three problems that we must correct in this city. One is recidivism. You cannot continue to have 38 people assaulting transit employees and committing 1,100 crime, over 1,100 crimes in the city. Two, severe mental health illness. It's a real problem. We see it on our system. People need the help that they deserve, and we are focused on doing that with the entire team that we have in place. And three, the random acts of violence. It play on the psyche of New Yorkers when someone is pushed to the tracks or someone shoots a gun in the subway system. Those three aspects are sending the message that our city is out of control. Our city is not out of control. We have the best police department on the globe, and they are delivering safety every day, and I cannot thank them enough for what they do in our city. Public transit system, and especially our subway system, is the lifeblood of our city. We hear it all the time from all of our corporate leaders, and those four million New Yorkers use it to get to work, school, and everyday movement in our city. And it, it makes New York City possible. In fact, we are who we are because of our public transportation system. And keeping New Yorkers safe and maintaining confidence in the system is key to ensuring that New York remains and continues to be the safest big city in America. When we came into an office two years ago, we were focused public safety, revitalizing our economy, and making the city more livable for New Yorkers. And today, we are continuing to deliver on those three important entities. When we saw an uptick in crime on the system in January, we did not wait. We responded immediately. Commissioner Caban and his team, uh, Chief Kemper, immediately reached out to me probably three weeks into January and stated there's a trend that we're seeing and we must respond immediately to it, and we partnered with the MTA to do so. We surged more than 1,000 additional offices in the subway system each for each day. And we saw the help from the MTA. They have installed over 15,000 cameras in our subway system, including 1,000 cameras in subway cars, train cars. And our data-driven deployment of additional offices produced good results underground. We saw arrests in the transit system increase 45 percent for the year. Our efforts have provided immediate results. In February, we witnessed a 15.4 percent decrease in crime 
And in March, we saw a 16% de decrease in crime. Thank my partner in Albany who continues to understand our North Star is public safety, and that's Governor Hochul. I could not ask for a better partner in ensuring we're able to move through technology like this and initiatives like this. When I spoke to the governor and told her, I believe we found some of the technology we're looking for. She said, Eric, let's move ahead and let's accomplish the task. We know the strategies that we put in place are not enough. We must get rid of those six felonies per day. And that's why we are going to evolve. We're going to evolve in a way to ensure that technology becomes part of the public safety apparatus that will join our police officers to accomplish the task we're looking for. I'm proud to announce that we are taking the next step forward in our ongoing efforts to make our subways even safer and ensure New Yorkers feel safer in the transit system. Today, in accordance with the Post Act, for the use of technology by the NYPD, we'll be publishing the impact and use policy for electric, electronic, electromagnetic weapons detection systems here in New York City. This kicks off the 90-day waiting period before this type of technology can be tested and used in our city to help keep New Yorkers safe. This is a rule that we have to follow. We have to wait 90 days before we can implement of this technology. But during the 90-day period, waiting period, the NYPD will work to identify all vendors with effective technology and expertise that are willing to come to New York City and pilot uh, their technology to help prevent firearms from entering our transit system and other type weapons. We put this out, the calling, in January of 2022, and we're seeing private industry step up and answer the call like those calls have been responded to before. This is a Sputnik moment. When President Kennedy said we were going to put a man on the moon and everyone responded. Well, today we said we're going to bring technology that can identify guns and other dangerous weapon, weapons, and our private industry responded. And the companies that we're partnering with, partnering with and announcing today is Evolve. Their weapons detection systems, like the one here today, are already in use in the city at private companies, at spaces where the public visit every day, uh, like the Met and one Vanderbilt. Another day, I was coming out of an office building, and I saw it being used there. It's at numerous sporting events, uh, like today is opening day, in Shea Stadium and other sporting, sporting events. events. While we'll be demonstrating the Evolve system in just a few minutes, we will show you how it operates, and trust me, it is clearly impressive when you're able to see how this technology is able to zero in where a gun potentially could be carried. But we're calling, putting the call out. This city has a technology mayor. When you do an analysis of how many Google searches are done, and how many people respond to technology, you see how much we come up. We have a technology mindset in this city, and we're calling all companies out there, bring us your product, let us test it. This is the best testing ground on the globe to see how good your product is. Now, would I prefer us not having to walk through this to come on our system? You're darn right I do. But we have to live life the way it is and work to make it what it ought to be. And right now, we have a small number of bad people that are doing bad things to good people. It was a chilling impact to watch a gun carried on our subway system and discharge with those passengers. And until that reality becomes the norm, we are going to use technology to identify those bad people who are carrying bad weapons. And I say, those who are afraid of scanners and rather not walk through it, I'd rather you be safe. So let's bring on the scanners, and we are taking a huge step towards public safety. We understand New Yorkers value their privacy, and we understand that we must be transparent on how this technology is used, and we're going to do that. But the goal is to keep New York City safe. We want to be clear of no facial recognition, recognition no biometrics. No items will be used to hold your facial, your identification. 
We also cannot talk about public safety as I switch gears without addressing our extreme mental health crisis, something that Dr. Fasan, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor williams Ison, and the entire team of the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, we talked about this from the beginning. Other people wanted to push this aside and ignore it. We faced it head on, and the results are clear. Our goal in the upcoming days, we must ensure that individuals who are experiencing severe mental illness receive the help they need. We can't keep walking by people that we know are dealing with severe mental health issues. And they are many times in danger to themselves and in danger to subway riders. We lost another life this week when a rider was pushed into the path of an incoming, oncoming, incoming train. Our sub subway system is not a hospital and it's not an emergency room. This is not the place where people should be if they're dealing with severe, extreme mental health illnesses. This transportation system must be a place where we commute safely. Those who need specialized assistance from medical professionals must be in places where they can receive it. Safety and justice for all New Yorkers must go hand in hand. So today, in addition to our technology announcement, I am announcing that we are ready to start hiring more clinicians for our subway cold response outreach teams, also known as scouts. These teams consist of clinicians and police working together to swiftly move individuals with untreated severe mental illness out of subway, out of the subway system and into care. In response to the terms early success, the team's early success, Governor Hoko has announced $20 million to expand to 10 teams by the end of 2025. We're also taking legislative steps asking Albany to pass Assemblymember Bronstein's Supportive Intervention, Intervention Act. We have to meet this head on and the laws must match the policies that we are attempting to implement. This will empower us to scale up our efforts and ensure that we are considering a patient's entire history, not take to the hospital one day, give them medication and then relieve them, but to take into account their entire history so that we can give them exactly what they need and make the determination whether to admit them to a hospital and give them the care that they deserve. If we remove these barriers, this would make common sense approaches to change on how we're seeing the mental health crisis adjust. This will allow us to get even more people with untreated severe mental illness that, the help that they need. And I wanna be clear, these change rules will apply to a small sub number of people. Those with mental illness is severe and is going untreated. We're, we're doing no favors for our brothers and sisters living on the street, dealing with severe mental health illness and walking by them, waiting until they commit a crime or waiting until they do a violent act and traumatize a family member. Can have a system where 50% of the people at Rikers Island have mental health illnesses and believe that that's the answer to the problem. We're gonna respect civil liberties, but you don't respect individuals when you ignore that they're crying out for help. The cruel aspects of severe mental illness is that it sometimes prevent those who need help to recognize the need that they require. And that is why we have laws that allow involuntary care. Maintaining public safety and making sure our city continues to be the safest big city in America is an ongoing effort. And this duality of technology and our mental health approach is going to accomplish the goal that we seek. Transit riders should be safe. Our city should be safe. People should receive the care that they deserve. There's no place for guns and weapons on our transit system, and we're going to respond to quality. I want to thank all our partners. Particularly, I want to thank the police commissioner and his team for continuing to put themselves in harm's way. And as I conclude, our hearts go out to the family members of our slain officer. On the wake is today. I received a call from the president a few moments ago uh, sending his condolences, and I would relay those condolences to the family, uh, but we are truly impacted by the loss. We're going to continue to provide the safety to the city that it deserves. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 
Next, uh, I'd like to turn it over to our partner here in this mission, um, the uh, chair and CEO of the MTA, John Olivo. But prior to that, I'd just like to say is that, uh, you know, the partnership with John, I'd like to say, I mean, we meet weekly. We probably speak daily. Uh, this is not the first uh, corroboration that we're doing here, right? I mean, we have been pushing this from day one. And I'd just like to say on behalf of the mayor and this administration, it is uh, truly beneficial to have a partnership like you. I value uh, your, your partnership and continued friendship in this particular endeavor. With that, I'd like to turn it over to the chair. Let me be clear. The MTA has never had bar better partners in city hall and in city government than this administration. They are passionate about transit safety. The mayor is a transit cop. It's in his blood. It ain't, it's not changing. And when I talk about how it was different when we were kids and we rode the trains and it was, there was more crime than there is right now, and we saw under the leadership of great police officials how we turned that around, and my statement to at the MTA board yesterday is we ain't going back. We ain't going back. I'm, uh, we are determined to have the same sense of safety that our kids grew up with. My kids rode the trains all through the night, all hours of the day. Maybe it tells you something about their parents. Um, <laughs> but they, they, they felt safe doing that no matter what hour of the day or night. And we're not going back to where it was in the old days. Um, Mayor, you and Governor Hochul are absolutely committed to doing everything possible to increase subway safety. And I am excited to learn more about this weapons detection technology that you have uh, done so much to evaluate and will continue to evaluate. But innovation is not just about technology. The city, the state, and the MTA are partnering to do a lot of things that haven't been done in the subways before. Surging officers, yes, you responded in January, and the result is that the surge of crime in January is back down almost to level versus 2023 as a result of the progress you made. But now, putting 800 officers at the fare array, recognizing that we have to put up a barrier at that point, not just to stop fare evaders, but also to make sure that people who have weapons don't get into the system. That's what is innovative um, about Operation Fair Play. And um, we all know that not every fair evader is a criminal, but literally virtually every criminal, if you look back at the videos, and we have 15,000 cameras, as the mayor said, when you look back at the video, every one of them jumped the turnstile or otherwise evade the fare. But also innovative as a result of efforts already undertaken. Gun seizures up 113 percent from the same period last year. Weapons uh, confiscation overall up 53 percent. Also innovative. Governor, after talking to the mayor, brought us together with the DAs because as many people as the great police department arrests, they got to get the, the criminal justice system has to make sure that they don't come back again and again. And just this last week, there, have been, there has initiated a series of meetings with the DAs that are about focusing on repeat offenders, looking at the stats, the repeat offenders identified by the PD. Barely over 100 of them accounted for some huge percentage of crime last year, something north of 20 percent of the crime. We need to make sure that their full criminal history is looked at every time a decision is made about bail, charging decisions, indictment decisions, and sentencing, that that has to be a focal point, And that discussion with the DAs is underway. And I am determined, with the mayor and the governor's leadership, that that should yield results. But the biggest innovation is what the mayor just talked about, is this mental health initiative what we call SCOUT, putting teams in the field with MTA cops combined with the clinicians being hired by the, hired by the city who understand the state mental health law and are prepared to pull the trigger on involuntary commitments. They know enough to diagnose severe mental illness. They walk through this passageway in Fulton, and they let people who are obviously homeless pass in some cases because they don't have the, uh, the, the signals of severe mental illness. But they are willing, when severe mental illness is identified and there's somebody suffering in the public space, who, by the way, is likely to be having impact on the sense of safety in the system, this 
team is ready to pull that trigger and say, you got to come indoors. It's time for you to get treated. And that is an innovation that, again, in com the partnership between the city and the MTA in the state is yielding. And we have a lot more beds for mental health than we did before Governor Hochul started pushing the hospitals to reestablish the inpatient psychiatric beds that were lost during COVID. And now we're reopening beds at facilities that were almost decommissioned, like the, the psychiatric center on Wards Island, to make sure there are enough inpatient psychiatric beds. Innovation. This is what the riders want to see us doing. They tell us in surveys again and again that as much as crime, the risk of crime in the system, which is pretty low, concerns them, what really alarms them when they're considering using the, the, the public transit system is the interaction with people who are behaving erratically. We have compassion, but our riders should not be subject to that sense of discomfort and fear and disorder that is part of the result of what of this problem we're challenging, we're, 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 we're trying to fight against. So as I said, we have to keep working together and innovating on safety. And once again, I just want to acknowledge the leadership we've had in Albany and the leadership we've had from the entire City Hall team. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chair. Next, we're going to hear from the Chief of the uh, Transit Bureau, uh, NYPD Chief Michael Kemper. Chairman Lieber, thank you, and uh, thank you for your continued support and for your leadership. Uh, Mayor Adams, Commissioner, good morning to all. Mayor Adams and Police Commissioner Caban have been clear. I've been clear. Public safety in the transit system is our top priority. People must be safe, and people must feel safe when they're riding the subway. As Mayor Adams mentioned, for nearly two months, we've deployed upwards of 1,000 additional cops into the subway system each day. Other NYPD initiatives included the deployment of top senior NYPD chiefs into the subway system as well. Last week's Chiefs in Transit added to an already enhanced uniform presence in the subways, reinforcing the sense of comfort a uniform cop, regardless of rank, brings to our riders. More importantly, this allowed department leadership to hear firsthand from riders their thoughts and concerns. And one of the top complaints for many people we spoke to was fare evasion and how it's not fair to them, the paying rider who's doing the right thing. And they're right. Open acts of lawlessness at our fare gates sets a tone of disorder at the very beginning of a rider's journey and has proven time and time again to be directly connected to other more serious crimes in our subway system. To that, we announced Operation Fair Play earlier this week. Operation Fair Play expands upon our existing efforts to curb fare evasion and directs transit cops and patrol cops to join forces and work together to address this very visible and illegal act. To immediately set the tone of law and order at the fare gates, exactly what our riders demand and exactly what they deserve. Our message is simple to anyone entering the subway system. Pay your fare, enter properly, or there is a good chance you will stop, be stopped by the police. Just ask the 31,500 people we already stopped this year and took enforcement act action against. And over the past two months, we've seen initiatives like these, including the investment in uniformed cops into the subway system, pay dividends. Decreasing crime overall 15% in February and nearly 16% so far in March. This is encouraging progress. That being said, while overall crime stats indicate that crime is trending downward, we have experienced a few unfortunate high-profile incidents that weigh heavily on our riders' minds. We understand this and we recognize our riders' concerns. And trust me, no one is more concerned about the safety of our riders than us at the NYPD. We remain focused, steadfast, and we are committed to preventing acts like those from ever happening again. Your cops are working hard at the task at hand. With increased deployments of uniform cops and plainclothes cops to the turnstiles, subway platforms, and inside moving trains. And they're not just there for show. They are doing incredible work, and they are confronting acts of lawlessness head on each and every day, all on behalf of our riders. 
This year, enforcement is at or near historic highs, with already over 4,500 arrests made in the subway system, a 54% increase from last year. Quality of life summonses are also up dramatically versus last year. Specifically, tab summonses are up 26%, with over 45,000 written already this year. And as of today, enforcement efforts by your cops have led to the arrest of 21 individuals who dared to enter our subway system while illegally possessing a firearm. This is more than double the number from the same period last year. Your cops have also made over 440 arrests this year for people in possession of other weapons, such as knives and other sharp objects. That's a 71% increase versus last year. Illegal weapons have no place in the subway system, and as I just detailed, our cops are doing outstanding work and seizing them at or near historic rates. So, and as the mayor announced, our efforts to capitalize on emerging technology, all in the pursuit of advancing public safety, is always top of mind here at the NYPD. We take great pride in welcoming any innovation that helps keep our riders safe. And as you know, your cops have a very challenging jobs and do exceptional work. And we are always looking at how we can support and enhance the work that they do. Today's announcement is an example of just that. Before I end, I have a message to our cops. Know this, you are second to none, and words can't convey just how much respect and admiration I have for you. Monday's tragic death of police officer Jonathan Dilla is a sobering reminder of the dangers you confront each and every day on behalf of New Yorkers. I wear this uniform with great pride because of you and cops like Jonathan Dilla. May his devotion to duty and family be an everlasting example for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Before we go to questions, I'd just like to reiterate uh, a comment that the mayor always talks about public safety and prerequisite. During the transition, uh, the mayor had said, hey, the way we police these, uh, uh, manage these cities has to change. And one of the things that he did that never ever got out is taking place now is that he created, and this is not a deputy mayor who works for him who says somebody else created, we're giving him it. He came, created this cross-sector security council and we meet quarterly with 75 of the private security directors of all the major businesses in New York City. Chase Manhattan Bank is there. Morgan Stanley is there. The U.S. Tenant Center is there. Lincoln Center is there. And the mayor says this is an evolution of police community relations. He says we need to be speaking to them. What are they doing? What are they seeing in their area to keep New York City safe? They use this machine, many of them. So when, before we made the decision to look at these type of machines, we reached out to our partners. And they says, hey, this is the good, this is the bad. Might want to check this. If you sign a contract, don't make the mistake we made. And that was strictly the mayor's, uh, uh, um, at his direction. That would be a great story to cover <laughs> and to talk to those individuals because we have, a, we have a, a text. We text back and forth every single day. And that corroboration uh, between us is a lot of the reasons what goes into the decisions that we make. As the mayor says, we don't have to be the guinea pig. We can let some of our partners let us know of some of the things that they are, are feeling. I think it's a good story to cover that. And you realize that each week, we more and more people are calling, asking us to join that. So this is an evolution of, hey, they've been using this. And they've been saying, hey, did you try this? You need to get this to the mayor because you may look at that. And that is a great uh, partnership. And there's a million partnerships that we are doing that has not hit the mainstream media about the corroboration that the mayor has saying, we don't have to do this together. This is a joint effort. And in the conversation that we and the mayor has, be in search of a solution, not in search of a problem. With that, I'd like to turn it over to questions. We're interested in this technology for uh, detection and deterrence, but I'm wondering if this pilot works out, how many of these machines how many subway stations would they be put at so that they can have the maximum effect of deterrence and detection? Uh, and th there's going to be a com complete analysis to determine uh, where we would deploy. A combination, for example, of where you're seeing gun arrests, where you're seeing shots fires. We have a shot fires uh, device that's throughout the city. So we're going to look at those areas and make a determination on should we place 
uh, the machines in those locations. The beauty of this is that they're mobile. They don't have to be fixed. So we can find out if there's an incident, incident where we're seeing a spike in shootings in a particular neighborhood. Uh, we can deploy their do these spot checks in those areas. So it's, like you said, it's not only a deterrent, but it's also a way to make sure we detect those who are car carrying a gun. You'll be surprised how many people will see that machine and walk through thinking that no one will pick up their gun. We see it in our hospitals. People are walking in with all sorts of weapons uh, because they don't believe the machine actually works. So we're hoping bad guys don't believe it work. They will work when we catch them. 472 subway stations. Uh -huh. So how many subway stations do you think well, we're going to see. Yeah, we're going to start out with a few to pilot, and we believe that if we're successful, that we could reach out and get homeland security money from the federal government. We believe uh, that we could get some uh, local businesses who would just sponsor of uh, the devices in their train stations, uh, near their office spaces. So we're going to use creativity to get the funding, and we're going to use, based on the dollars we have here, to put as many as possible. Uh, the goal is to really lock in the product. Uh, we're, we went through extensive uh, uh, examination of the product, a testing of the product. Uh, many people don't realize uh, uh, Commissioner Daughtry and his team uh, they have been out here on the ground uh, looking at the product, and if we see the success that we want, we're going to make our investment, but we're also going to look out, look towards the federal government to invest as well. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I was wondering, are you still taking bids? And 10 scout teams seems like very clean for 472 stations. The shoving at Harlem, there were six cops on the platform. Is there a plan to expand this team or create more? And then also wondering for GNO, could he elaborate on the criminal justice coordinator for the MTA? Is it for all cases of crime or just transit workers? Oh, it was the first time you said? It's for the metal detectors. Yeah, what we're doing, we're, we're, we're putting the call out. Uh, uh, Commissioner Daughtry received a number of calls when people heard we were doing some form of announcement. And so we're, we're still asking everyone to come in. This is going to be extremely competitive. Uh, the best product. Uh, is going to be used in our city. And trust me when I tell you, this drives innovation. Innovation comes from getting out there, testing, and going to the next level and having an open market. Who would have thought, um, you know, just a device that you were able to read songs on or hear songs on, now you just about do everything in your life from taking memos to taking pictures to, uh, you know, uh, tweeting how good I am as a mayor. I mean, you do so much now with your phone. So that's the evolution that we're talking uh, talking about. Uh, Jenna? Because you made a really good point, Jana, and I just wanted to um, elaborate on that. So, Kelly, one of the things that's really important about the scout teams is that they're specialized. You know that we have a lot of people who are doing out.